Now that you have a better understanding of how change occurs in organizations, let's turn our attention to a specific kind of change, innovation. Innovation is a new idea that initiates or improves a product, process, or service. All innovations imply change, but not all changes introduce new ideas or lead to significant improvements. Innovative organizations tend to have similar cultures. They encourage inter-unit communication, committees, task forces, cross-functional teams, and other mechanisms help to facilitate communication across the organization, not in silos. Innovative organizations also promote the training and development of their members so that their skills remain relevant and strong. These organizations encourage experimentation and risk-taking. Some structures facilitate flexibility, adaptation, while others hinder it, making it more difficult for people to try new things. Innovative organizations reward success, but they don't punish people when their ideas don't pan out or when they make small mistakes. They're encouraged to learn from them and move on. Some organizations celebrate mistakes when they bring to light issues or concerns that were previously hidden. Once a new idea is developed, innovative organizations encourage people to become idea champions and promote that idea, build support for it, overcome resistance, and ensure it's implemented effectively. Idea champions, interestingly, tend to have common personality characteristics. They are extremely self-confident, persistent, energetic, and have a tendency to take risks, healthy risks. They also tend to display characteristics associated with transformational leadership. They inspire and energize other people with their vision of an innovation and their strong personal attachment to, to the change. They are also good at gaining the commitment of other people. They are persuasive in social situations. And finally, they also tend to have a high degree of autonomy within their roles. Freedom that allows them to think outside the box and take risks. People in highly structured, low control jobs don't have the freedom to experiment. The final topic of this lecture is organizational learning or the process of using the past to make improvements for the future. A learning organization develops continuously and is able to adapt and change more quickly than a non-learning organization. It's one in which people put aside their old ways of thinking and learn to be open with each other and understand how the organization really works. They can then create a plan or vision together and coordinate their efforts to achieve that vision. All organizations learn to some degree, whether they consciously choose to or not. But some organizations have a learning culture where change, innovation, improvement is part of everyday operations. Learning organizations use these five activities among many others, to bring about change. First, they solve problems systematically. They rely on the evidence and teach everyone how to use an evidence-based approach to solve problems. Second, they encourage experimentation with new ideas in order to develop a complete understanding of a situation, a phenomenon. Next, they learn from their past experiences, including their successes and their failures. The fourth activity is to transfer knowledge through reports, videos, training, and job rotation. The final activity is to measure learning through surveys, interviews, and direct observation. In the final part of this lecture, we are going to review some of the implications for managers.